Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here popping in for another episode of Don't Know. But um, I'm so used to saying that for the talks with Tony. Now, uh, I, I was talking to a client and this came up. And um, somebody need to see it. Somebody need to hear it. But this came up when one thing I noticed, one thing I noticed, I, I really don't fully understand it, but... In our world, we have these beauty constructs. We have these societal norms that have been put in place. And the media determines everything. You know, what looks good, what looks bad. And what I notice a lot of times is people who have nothing wrong with them in the grand scheme of things, they are God's creation, a unique being unique to themselves they are an original not a carbon copy a lot of times those people feel less than because of what has happened to them in their life and you may be discounting yourself when you're worth way more and i'll be honest with you i do it all the time and so i i use myself as an example on this just so you could understand like when I do a coaching session, right now I'm at $400 an hour. Now the industry says I'm supposed to be charging $9,000, $10,000 an hour based on the injured, the industry little pay scale. Cause it's, it's divided by your annual year income, your yearly income divided by the amount of hours you work a week and and then whatever that is, then you multiply it by three. So it's a way to come up with your hourly rate for one-on-one -on -one sessions. When I said that on a video, a lady actually came in the comments and said that she follows a woman on Instagram who charges $10,000 an hour for coaching and is getting ready to go to $14,000 an hour. Now, it's one thing about not valuing yourself and another thing just about being realistic and not being greedy and not being money hungry but that's just on the money side and that ain't really where all of where we focusing at although that does play a part into this so i have sold courses for five dollars i've sold courses like my birth your book course from writing books from publishing books i've earned hundreds of thousands of dollars and i sold the birth your book course for five dollars the reason why is because more so than wanting to be a blessing, I devalue my own knowledge. And a lot of times people pay $5 and then never do the course because it was only $5. That birth your book course can easily be sold for $500 because if you're serious about writing a book, writing a book is a huge accomplishment. So one day when I feel like it, that course will be worth $500 and I probably will reshoot it before I change the price. But one day when I step fully into myself, then I will price my courses at where they're supposed to be priced at. So what I'm sharing with you is that even myself, I still have areas that I need to work on in this and really knowing my worth and valuing myself. And people can always tell you, but it comes to when you're ready just because somebody said hey tony your course is worth way more than that i'm not going to change the price just because somebody said that because they'll say that and they're not going to buy it anyway they're not they, they ain't going to pay for it they even telling me to raise the price because it ain't going to affect them because they're not that type of supporter they know it's just going to affect other people but if i said okay well i'm finna i'm finna change that price tonight you buying it well uh well, see, well, see, what reason what I was saying that was, well, see, one day when I get to that place, okay, then, so that's why I got to keep it at the price where it's at, because a lot of people can't afford it. Now, when you look at your life and you look at how you carry yourself in the world, I was talking to a coach and he mentioned like speaking engagements and like what he's being offered and he said i would love to be at such and such that way i could just do x amount and you know it'll be a decent little trade-off and i said well set your price at that and don't go for anything less than that 
and instead of getting 10 engagements you may only get three but now when you get those three now the word starts to spread that this is your going rate and then them other seven realize that they got to save more money raise more money or they just got to come back and offer you what you're worth and then i said that to him right and then he said you know um oh you ghostwrite or what have you and i said yeah but i retired from ghostwriting and he said why did you retire i said because the people in my circle they can't pay what it's worth i said it really should be fifty thousand dollars i said i only charge ten thousand the last person that came to me was a super bowl champion and still active in the league making millions of dollars and i told him twenty thousand and he turned his nose up at it like it was too much so i said in my circle in my race they don't value ghostwriting this coach i was talking to is of another race he's caucasian and his writer that i know like these other writers that's caucasian they know better than me they can't write no book better than me but you know what they get paid six figures one hundred thousand to five hundred thousand me because of what i come from because what people who look like me come from we have a scarcity mindset and and even when we have millions of dollars we still have a scarcity mindset because that's it's a mindset it's not what's in your bank account you can have money in your bank account but if you got a scarcity mindset you still gonna be frugal and broke minded and you're not gonna live abundantly and so he said to me, he said, well, why don't you just tell them your, your fee is 50000 and don't accept anything less? I said, well, that's essentially what I'm doing now. That's kind of why I've retired because people can't pay what it's worth. And he was like, oh, okay. But you see how I saw his worth and he saw my worth, but neither one of us really saw our own worth. And that's the purpose of this video. Know your worth. And the reason this was inspired by my clients that I coach who are women and then sometimes it's men that do this too but typically it's women who nothing is wrong with them look totally fine but will put up with trash from a man will let a man dog them out and let a man treat them worse than the bubble gum on the bottom of his shoe because the women feel like they are nothing the women feel like they are unattractive the women feel like they're worthless or worth less and it's sad because i see so much of this going on and i remember a guy said one time he said why do he said why does you know the women who are petite or what have you have all these insecurities and then the women who are voluptuous or full figure have all this confidence he said who who programmed it like this you know it was, it was somebody tweeted that because and essentially what he was saying is he was like the world has put this certain figure in the movies and the magazines and and praised that figure but these women are insecure and being dogged out but then the other women who have the opposite body type are doing um self-love retreats uh, like the young lady that they say be twerking the the artist uh name start with a l but they they be everybody be talking about she need to stop twerking and she need to stop promoting unhealthy lifestyle but it's like she embracing her body and she's showing off her body and she doing you know what she do and then it'll be somebody who a third of her size or half of her size and they they insecure and they getting dogged out by their husband or their boyfriend and so the question was raised like why do we how do we choose to love and value ourselves and what makes us not value ourselves even when others can value us even when others can see your value why do you not see your own value why are we uncomfortable asking for what we're worth in a job in a relationship in a friendship why are we uncomfortable receiving or demanding or asking for 
what we deep down know we deserve and instead we settle for less why do we do that and a lot of times and then when we go into that place then other people start to see us like that and other people start to take advantage of our weakness they say don't take my kindness for weakness but you got to really get to the root and say is this kindness or is this weakness call it what it is is it kindness or is it weakness? Because kindness still knows how to say no. You see what I mean? So a lot of times we can feel worthless and the people may not value it either. So I just said to myself before I started filming this, because a production company reached out to me with a show concept. And this happens every month. And every month I tell myself I'm not doing TV. And then another concept comes from TV and I entertain it. It's not to say that I'm going to say yes, but I look into it. But I think deep down, I don't want to do it. And deep down, I don't want to audition. So that changes my energy. So when I get on Zoom to do the Zoom interview, my energy really is not right because honestly, I'm not really excited about it. And honestly, I really don't like TV and don't really believe in it. And I feel that they full of crap. And so really, I don't want to do it. But I go through the motions because I'm not all seeing, all knowing, and I'm not God. And I don't know what could be God. And I figure out along the way, but I got to go through the motion to see how my spirit feels before, during, and after that interview process, then I could tell if this God or not. And so, because I don't know if God gonna send me on television for a season or two to gain millions of people who then know my name and then find me here where I produce the shows. And then even when that show is done, I still got that million people that I can help develop that I can help them grow and, and help, you know, work with them. So I don't know at what point if it's God or not. And then, or if God want me to stay here and no, I'm not asking you to tell me what you think God doing for me. What I'm asking you to do is what do God want for you? And to identify what does God want for you and what God wants you to do and what do you deserve? And then can you get to the place to where you make a decision with me? because I'm making a decision today with you. Now, and then sometimes it's hard to even respond. Like I get speaking engagements and because I can stay home with my family and be here with my family and earn a living, I really don't want to do a speaking engagement, a speaking engagement for under 20,000. But who can afford 20,000? A corporation. But corporations they buy into hype they don't buy into realness so if they come to me and i don't look like twenty thousand dollars if my production of my videos don't look like twenty thousand dollars they don't want to pay me twenty thousand because for them it's not about what you know and what you're saying because they're just bringing in a speaker for fluff they just bringing in a speaker for rah rah they just bringing in a speaker to check the box they really don't care about the employees mental health and well-being they just saying we brought in a speaker so let's find a speaker that has painted a picture and painted an image that that speaker is successful in big money and then we'll pay them big money this person over here could be you know way more dynamic but if his or her brand doesn't look highly produced and overly polished then we can't pay them twenty thousand dollars we're gonna go and offer them three thousand because he don't even edit his videos he don't even have an intro an outro he don't even use thumbnails he just started putting something in the description box yesterday we can't offer him twenty thousand dollars because he's not even investing money into his video he ain't paying no editor he ain't paying nobody to do nothing none of that stuff but this this guy over here or this woman over here Whenever they speak at an event, they bring their own camera crew and they record the event from three, four, five different angles. 
Then they give it to the editor and they have it sliced up and turned into this theatrical production. And then they, they post it online like they the number one speaker in the world. But you won't know the difference. You wouldn't know the difference because you buying the marketing. And so that's how it is also when it comes in our relationships, when it comes to our jobs, when it comes to when you building your brand, people just buying the marketing. And so if you don't know your worth, then you're not going to present yourself a certain way. You know, you're not going to do things um, top dollar. So for me, I feel very regular Joe, average every day. I know my worth, but what I say I'm worth, it doesn't match what I show because I don't show what I'm worth. I was talking to my partner today and we were talking about spending. And we were talking about finances because he used to always talk to me about, you know, saving money and stuff. And I sent him my month to date spending. And he and his words to me, which I won't say numbers, he said, bro, nobody would believe if you if you told him you was touching that kind of money, nobody would believe it. And and his reason being is because I don't show it because I don't show all my cars. You'll see me in a car, but you don't know what kind of car I'm in unless you're a car connoisseur unless you're a car expert you don't know what kind of car i'm in it's because i don't walk up to the car filming and show you the car and and then then flip the camera on me and get in i don't do a tour of my cars i don't do a tour of my house i don't do a a tour of my closet so i don't show my money so therefore when somebody come to me and they offer me something for a speaking engagement, they literally will offer me a thousand dollars because my brand online look broke, but it looked broke because I don't care to show myself as this big deal because I want to be cool, calm, collected. I want to be chill. I don't want to be, you know, flamboyant and all out there. But at the end of the day, you still got to know your worth. And so sometimes you're going to have to read a person your resume. So when you walk into this, this here new gig and they say, well, what you want? And you say two fifty dollars an hour for this coaching. What? two fifty dollars an hour? Such and such charge $25 an hour. Okay. Um, um, let me hand you this here resume. And yeah, now you compare this here resume. The, the, that that twenty five dollar hour person resume, okay. All right, resume is different. You go into that job and you say, "Look, this is what I deserve to be paid. Like this is the industry standard. I'm a little above the industry standard, or I'm at least industry standard." And they trying to give you thirty five thousand, but you 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 know you command fifty thousand. You have to be willing to walk away, and so that's the place that I got to in my business dealings. That's the place I got to in my business dealings. Now, me personally, my own offerings, I still, at the same time, I still think about the people that I'm serving. And I understand that not everybody can afford these prices. And then I also realized that some of the other people who look like me, they serve an the audience, but the audience they serve could also be buying their courses with credit cards and going into debt, a whole lot of debt. Cause people buy my course with credit cards too but i just i want to keep the prices lower it also could be serving scam artists who's scamming or making money illegally or you know doing different things fast money stuff and so they got enough people that make money illegally or get fast money or do whatever big bar still to pay for their course but for me because my message is so you know straight and narrow and i don't do any cursing and condoning any foolishness my audience is a very real people very real people very humble people you know it's honest people i don't have like dope boys and credit card scammers galore in my audience because my message makes them feel uncomfortable and they feel like i'm preaching to them so i have to understand my audience and who i'm talking to and this is what you have to do when you go into the marketplace. In the relationship marketplace, in, in the workplace, the job, the entrepreneur, you have to know 
what you want. You also got to know who you are and you got to know what you portray. And that is the hardest thing in the world. It's extremely hard, but it's a mindset. It's really you got to get to it to where to understand. Not every time I say it's a mindset. I think about a comedian that be saying it's a mindset and it don't go nothing but what he talking about. And it's not he messing me up. I'm like, did he get this from me? Because now I realize I be saying it's a mindset. I'm like, maybe the man watched my video one day. <laughs> that thing got me. And so listen to him. You have to know this because this is what I need you to understand. I need you to understand that God created you. And so now when I be talking to you, I'm talking to me too now. And this is what the Lord be saying to me and this is what I'm saying to you. I need you to understand that God created you. That he made you, that he sent you. And that it's a price out there for you. That it's a value that's already been set on you. And everybody ain't going to see it. But when you put it on there... If they want it, they're gonna have to get with it. And it's gonna have to, and they gonna and they gonna get with it now, or they're gonna pay more later. I used to see the comedian, this other comedian used to always say, um, pay now or pay more later. And he said the longer, and really he was talking from a place of frustration because it was people that he thought he was funnier than that was getting TV shows and movie deals. And he just was for the people. He just was an internet guy. And that's essentially, you know, how I am. Like, I'm for the internet. Like, I'm, I'm with the people. Because I'm not as polished, to keep it real, as fake. I'm not willing to do the show pony dance. I'm not willing to fake it, to make it. I'm just not willing to put on this, this fake, this facade. I'm not willing to do it. I had a client today I talked to. And she said, Tony, she said, it's so crazy when I'm on the phone with you. She said, when I'm on the phone with you, it is so crazy because she, I, she said, I would imagine most people have like a voice. They have like a, a voice they put on. But she was like, I've listened to your audio book and uh, your videos. And when I'm on the phone with you, you sound just like you sound on your audio book and she said I feel like I should be in my car and I said oh wow that's cool you know I wasn't trying to sound the same but I just I talk when I'm reading my book I'm trying to say my words the right way but I'm not changing my voice I'm keeping the same tone of voice and then as when I'm talking on the phone even though I may talk more slang you know on the phone versus when I'm reading the book but I say that to say is you have to be okay being you and you got to know who you are and you got to be okay being for who you are for. Because the thing about it is a lot of times we try to be for somebody else. And we try to, and I remember if you go way back, I, I deleted a lot of them, I hid a lot of them. But if you go way back to the beginning of my YouTube, my videos were very monotone. They were very monotone. I, I talked as proper as I could. And yeah, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that. But the reason, but the, here's the reason why I was doing that because I was trying to please uh, proper speaking people because I didn't want to look like a shuck and jive turkey. I didn't want to be boxed in as like a typical black guy. I didn't want anybody to think, oh, he po dumb in country. So I was trying to talk like I'm a counselor, like I'm a doctor. But now I realize I had to, I had to, when I came into myself, the more videos I shot, the more I shot video, the more and more comfortable I got, and the more I realized, look, I gotta be myself. In order for me to stand out, in order for me to get what God got for me, I got to be me. If I'm trying to be like somebody else, then I can't get what God got for me. And so this is the thing. You have to understand that you may be intended to be with somebody who don't nobody else want because they don't try to shuck and jive and paint this picture. But the person that you end up being with just because of their pure energy, that person might be the, the best person, the best spouse in the world. And a millionaire are getting ready to become some kind of heir to something 
but you attracted them because you are authentic and he or she is authentic and you got to be okay with that now when you go seeking something that is for somebody else now you change who you are and you become something else and then you lose yourself you forget yourself and now you live your life just seeking approval so that's what you got to realize and understand that's the place you got to come to and you got to say hold on now what's going on here now what's going on here now who am i what do i want who do i want to be and you have to know your worth and listen it can't be from arrogance. It can't be from arrogance. And this is the part I want to leave with you is you have to become your worth. See, you can't just say you know your worth, but you're not becoming your worth. So you have to build yourself and build your brand. If you say, hey, I want this type of person, but then but you let your body go and you can't remember the last time you worked out then you're not becoming what you say you're worth. But if you go and you busting your butt to be as fit as you can, as clean as you can, as smart as you can, you have to become your worth. So if I wanna say, hey, you know what, Tony? You know, you, you're a smart person, you got good personality, like just be you. Then I have to remind myself of that over and over and over. And when I'm just being me, I'm going to tell y'all something that is crazy to me. When I'm just being me, <laughs> there is nobody that I have not met that has not asked me, where are you from? And I'm like, hey, man, like, can you just talk to me regular, like, still trying to highlight that I got an accent? Like, my goodness. See, this is what's wrong with my conscious nine. Got me trying to talk proper because every time I open my mouth, where are you from? Oh, uh, Alabama, okay, yeah. Or your grandma from Alabama, that's what I thought. Well, I hear that, well, you sound real country. I'm like, my goodness. But you know what? I had to grow into myself, and I'm still growing into myself. Tomorrow, me and my wife, we going on a trip. It is not for my family. Our family trip later, this for for my partner. And I'm going to be around white people. And I have to prep myself. I got to tell myself, Tony, just be yourself. Don't go in there. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm Tony, how are you? Don't go in there trying to talk. Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, how you doing? What's going on? I was talking to a coach last night, and the words that I would say, I had to say those words. I was talking to a coach today, and the words that I would say, I had to say those words. And by the end of the conversation, the coach was talking like me. The coach, you know what I mean? He was talking like me. And anytime I'm talking to somebody, they put on a street accent. And by the end of the conversation, I realized, oh, now they talking street. Now talk how you talk. Talk how you talk. Like, I ain't trying to talk street. I ain't trying to talk like nothing else. This just how I talk. I just say my words wrong because of who I grew up around, where I grew up at. So, this just me. And so, you have to grow into you. And, like, if you talk proper and you say all your words right, when you talking to somebody, I don't care if you a woman and this a man and this man come from the absolute street and you can barely understand what he's saying, don't try to use the little bit of slang that you know. Oh, what's up, coolio, daddy-o, playboy, what's going on? Like, no, just talk proper. Hi, how are you? My name is Alexis. What's your name? Okay, cool. So awesome. Cool beans. Just talk how you talk. You see what I mean? People going to respect you for being you. And that's what I'm growing into every day. So all night to night, when I go to sleep, I'm going to have to be saying to myself when I go to sleep, Tony, just be yourself. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. You know, just be yourself. Like, you ain't got to front, man. You ain't got to be so shy. You ain't got to be reserved because you beating yourself up about your country accent. Just be yourself. Now, listen. Look at this. Look at this. See this here? See this here? See how I had to look at my own class. See, see this old Kool-Aid smile? Guess what? All my life, so I had two big teeth right here, right? And I had, when this tooth, when I lost this tooth, you know, this tooth right here came in 
So what happened is the tooth right here went to grow in. But because this tooth was down and this tooth was down, this tooth right here, it got it stayed right here at the top. So I had shark teeth. Looked like the shark on Finding Nemo. So I had a, a shark tooth right there. And then on the bottom, it wasn't all the way, it's still a little crooked, but it was kind of some here and then the side teeth kind of stick out a little bit. So I walked around and I never smiled. I never smiled because I had that shark tooth. I never smiled so I couldn't be me. I couldn't show my personality. Like the personality you see on these video when I be cutting up, I would never be able to be this person. When you watch my videos on Tony Gaston Academy, which eventually I'm gonna have to reshoot all the courses because I was way younger, I was a little slimmer. As before I used to get my hairline painted on. And you see what I'm saying? Now I could tell you about this here stuff because I'm me now. I'm comfortable being me. And when you see my video, someone I got spaces in my teeth because the braces space your teeth some in, in one season, it'll space your space your teeth. So one of my videos, I, I got a whole field goal post in my teeth. And you're gonna see my lips look kind of stuck on a lot of my videos in Tony Gas's Academy. Listen, I already know you noticed it. You ain't got the wing and you ain't got to talk about it in the comments, okay? I oh yeah, Tony, I seen that. You sure right. Yeah, you look like somebody punch you in the mouth. Listen, don't try to get your little rocks off on me just because you used to get bullied in middle school, nah. So don't try to add on to me, nah. I'm trying to tell you I'm working on my self-confidence. So don't you be in there bullying me in the comments trying to tap me down. And so, but I got the braces in my mouth on the um on the thing. On my course. And so what I did at 32 years old, 31 or 32 years old, I went and got braces. I had them for two and a half years. And yes, I'm 37 now. I got them off probably about 35. I missed a couple payments because it was $150 a month. So whenever I couldn't afford that $150, oh yeah, in my 30s, I had times I couldn't afford $150. You know what it feel like. Whenever I ain't had that $150, I just ain't go to my appointment because I, I had to swipe that card after each appointment because I was going once a month to get tightened adjustments or whatever. So I end up having them instead of two years, I end up having them two and a half years because I probably had missed by six payments. So it put me six months behind. And so eventually, you know, my money changed in that process or I stopped spending the way I spend. Cause me, I'm a zero balance type of guy. If, if I can make 10 million, okay, what, what cost, okay. <laughs> and it ain't even about spending like this week today, I gave $1,000 to one of the students on Tony Gaston's Academy because she signed up for uh, 18 courses and I was looking to see who in the most courses and it was her. So we did a WhatsApp today and I, I, I blessed her with $1,000 and she had spent like 1200 or 1300 so essentially I just gave her all her money back. And then I sent my mama 1800 and throughout this week, I had six other people that students in TonyGastonsAcademy.com, I sent them $250. So I just always have been a zero balance type of guy. You know, I trust God. He said he clothed the lilies of the field and he feed the fowls of the air. How much more he gonna do for me? So even if after I'm done spend, I give and then I spend and live and then I give some more. And, and that's just how I've always been. You know, and I feel like that's probably how I earn the way I earn and the way I see business is because of how I spend and my mindset with money. It, it come and go. I don't worship it. I'm not finna store it up on earth because I can't hook a U-Haul up to my hearse full of money. And I don't want to leave a bunch of money to my kids because money that you get that you didn't earn ain't going to do nothing but destroy you. So that's my mindset. And that ain't your mindset. I'm not. You know, the financial coaches, that's why I'm not a financial coach. You see what I'm saying? Oh, man, you know what I forgot? I was supposed to be taking my son to train tonight and completely forgot. And I bet it's what my wife talking to me, texting me about right now. I totally, 100% forgot. And I think my son forgot too. Uh-oh. Well, tell him. Uh, yeah, cancel it. We at our... God bless them. We at home. We tied up now. I got work to do. 
we would we'll do soccer training, but it's pretty much over. I mean, soccer over anyways. And so now, listen, I got work to do. My son, my son he been off his game for months because he, he slip up on them grades a little bit. He get took off that game. So he I gave him that game. He on that game and the other day. Boy, he probably forgot all about soccer because, you know, 14-year-old want to play the game. I got to go now. This is my wife calling me. Hey, love yourself. Listen to this again. Love yourself. Set your worth. I and mean, remember what I told you. Become your worth. So you got weight to get off of you like me. I'm getting the weight off of me. You need to take a certification. Get your certification. You need to grow. You need to learn. Become your worth. Don't just set a worth. Become it. God bless you. We'll talk.